Hey, a lot of people uh, are confused by a couple of verses um, about repentance. And I want to explain, because uh, we know repentance is a change of mind, metanoia, or to turn from unbelief. So you, the things you have to repent of are unbelief, idolatry, and dead works, your self-effort of trying to work your way to heaven. And all of those actually occur at the time you believe the gospel. So they're all wrapped up into one event. Um, because if you believe the gospel, you're going to turn from idolatry and unbelief and self-effort. So all of that actually happens. Now, every time Jesus tells people to repent and believe the gospel, he's always speaking to Pharisees and scribes. He's never speaking to overt sinners. Okay? Now, these people kept the law perfectly in their flesh, right? So the repentance they needed was to believe on him, and they wouldn't. Now, he's talking to them in Matthew 20 and 21 uh, about how they didn't, where, what John's baptism was about. Was it of man or was it of God? Now, these were teachers coming down asking him by what authority he, he did what he did, okay? Now, these were scribes and Pharisees. These were not sinners. Uh, and I'm going to read that. It says that uh, for John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and you believed him not, but the publicans and harlots believed him. So uh, it's him saying that they needed to come to repentance of their unbelief. Now, another verse that many people get out of context is when Jesus tells uh, them, I didn't call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. Everybody says, see, he told the sinners to repent of their sins. No, that's Jesus tongue in cheek saying, you don't need me. You're already righteous, but the sinners know they need me. So they're going to turn to me. You see, they're going to believe the gospel because they know they're not under any delusion of self-righteousness. Because the repentance required isn't to turn from sin. That is, repent of sins is repent of transgression of the law, which is keep the law. Now, we all should, and I'll give you verses of Paul and the other apostles that instruct us to live well, so to follow after the Spirit, to serve the one who saved us. But that's not about this. This is simple salvation. Another repentance verse that's taken out of context is in um, Luke Okay, Jesus is talking to them about an accident that occurred that some Galileans were killed in. And it says, There were at present the season some that told him of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answering unto them said, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things? I tell you nay, but except ye repent, you shall all likewise perish. Now, this isn't about eternal perishing. This is not about salvation. This is about them facing an early death if they didn't turn to. Now, this does appear that they should turn from their sins or their unbelief. It isn't really clear here, but because he's talking about sin in specific, I could say he may be talking about them turning from, from sin or their unbelief or both here. So, he's talking about physical perishing. Now, I've mentioned before that when we do get saved and we continue to live <laughs> we continue to live in sin, that there are consequences for it, but eternal damnation isn't one of them. We are told we're now on the hit list once we're saved. So <laughs> silly. So once that happens, we should walk after the spirit and and show Christ in us. And it's all about our freedom. We don't focus on the law because the strength of sin is the law. So I want to clear that up. We cannot add any self-effort to the glorious gospel. I say it clearly. The life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ fulfilling the scriptures for the remission of sins. Um, so I wanted to clear up those repentant scriptures and what they meant. Now, I, I went through all of Romans and Galatians today, uh, and I found something interesting uh, because I'm constantly... Um, I'm constantly accused of telling people just remain in sin, but I don't. It's just I don't focus on sin because my sins are gone and I'm free. And so when I'm tempted, I'm like, eh, you know, I don't struggle with them like I used to. 
Um, but that comes from being in the Word and growing in Christ. It's, it doesn't happen automatically. Regeneration, because I said your regeneration is their changed life. No, 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 no. Regeneration is your spirit is reborn when you believe this gospel. And so all the apostles instruct us to show that truth through our actions to men. The whole book of James is about justification in men's eyes. But we're justified to God by grace through faith alone. No. It's a gift. It's a mercy. Okay. But I found this scripture about people that accuse me and other people of preaching a license to sin. And we don't. We tell you rest in Christ. But here's a, here's a scripture for that. Time. Romans 3, 8. And it said, right. and um <clears throat> And not rather, as we be slanderously reported, and some affirm that we say, let us do evil that, so that good may come, whose damnation is just. Because they speak against the clear gospel. And they add to it, and they accuse people like me, and, and, and people that stand on the true gospel in 1 Corinthians. And they say that we tell people to live in sin because we tell them to keep repenting of sins out because it's the same thing as keeping the law it's the exact same thing we're only saved by what he did and resting in that get saved boom then the holy spirit comes turn from him turn from all your sin do what you can but you know our sin is deep it is thought word and deed every day we can show improvement we can be justified to men through a good moral life but that is far from perfection because we know by works of the law shall no flesh be justified by works of righteousness shall no man be justified we are saved by grace through faith alone he believed god and it was counted to him for righteousness okay and, and i've given you tons of those verses and i'll give you more i've gone through romans and galatians um here is about how we cannot mix works this is romans chapter 4 for what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. So if you're doing something for God to save you, it's no longer a gift. It's debt. He owes you that. But he doesn't. He doesn't. Because if he gave you what he owed you, you go to hell. Um, but to him that worketh not... But believe on him that justifies the ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness. You see that? He justifies the ungodly. Now, we should rest in that. The true gospel is glorious news. It is not a command to change your life or to submit or to obey. It is a free gift to be received. And because we've received that, we should gratefully and graciously serve him. It is our reasonable service after what he's done for us. But until you get that it's all him, it's all him. And they say they it's grace through faith, but they throw the works in. There is nothing different between the modern Protestant church and Catholicism apart from sacraments. Because they all think it's something they do in addition to what Christ did on the cross. And how can we glorify him when we say that? We can't. And yes, we should show him in us. But, but it is nothing to do with our salvation. We must get that clear. So I'm, I'm hoping I answered some of your questions. Thanks.